Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to show you something that will take you right back to your childhood. I'm going to show you how to make wagon wheels. But before we start, I need to do a few shout outs. One to Mr. Juice, who requested it, and another to Robert Marshall, who also requested a shout out. And a shout out to my new Patreon fan, Kim Squara. And last but by no means least, uh, shout out to Rodula Dulos, who requested this wonderful thing. So if you don't know what a wagon wheel is, it is not the wheel of a wagon, although it's meant to be a similar kind of size. And I'm sure in my childhood it was. Now it's not much bigger than an aspirin. And here's one I bought earlier. <laughs> I've not had one of these for, well, decades. Um, but look at that tiny little thing. They used to be this big. Um, and Americans, you'll be saying that's a moon pie, um, which in a similar vein is meant to be about as big as the moon. So all it is is two biscuits with marshmallow sam sandwiched in between and coated in chocolate. And they're marvellous. Sorry about that, couldn't resist it. Anyway, um, if you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, press the little ding dong so you get notifications, make a donation, become a patron, or even buy merchandise. So the wagon wheel size controversy, the company that makes them in the UK, Burton's, deny that the size has changed ever. Uh, and claim that, you know, it's because kids' hands are tiny. <laughs> Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, anyway, so the UK one is 74 mil diameter. The Australian one is 88, but mine will be 10 centimeters across or even bigger, I don't know. Anyway, enough waffling, let's get on with it. So regular viewers will know that I like to torture myself by making everything from scratch. <laughs> so I'm gonna make my own biscuits, I'm gonna make my own marshmallow, but I do draw the line at making my own chocolate. So I've got 170 grams of wholemeal flour, 170 grams of oats, these are pinhead oats, 150 grams of softened butter, a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, baking soda, and two or three tablespoons of milk, just enough to bring the dough together. Right, I'm gonna make my biscuit dough, so I've got my magical mixing machine, and uh, there's the flour, and the oats. So I'll just mix the flour and the oats together first of all. And then I've got the butter chopped into little wee cubes. So I'll pop those in, just whiz those together till the butter's incorporated. And you'll end up with a mixture that looks like fine breadcrumbs. So now we'll add the half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, which is baking soda, and the sugar. Just mix those together. And now I'm just going to mix in enough milk to bring it together. So don't don't overdo it. Don't underdo it either, I'm going to need a bit more. So that's what I've got. If you um, just grab a handful, and see it kind of clumps together. So I'm going to wrap that in plastic film and stick it in the fridge to rest for about half an hour. Quite a lot, isn't there? <laughs> we might be making a lot of biscuits. Okay, chill. Okay, time to roll out the biscuits and bake them. So I've got the oven preheating to 170 degrees Celsius for a fan oven. That's 190 for a conventional one and gas mark five. I've got two baking sheets, two sheets of uh, the silicon stuff, my dough, uh, some flour, rolling pin, thing, cookie cutter, 10 centimeters. And I couldn't resist, I've got to do a monster one, that's 16 centimeters. Yeah! Flour the worktop. 
I'll just grab about half the dough, first of all, and roll it. Oh, flour on the rolling pin as well. You want your dough to be about four millimeters thick. Just going to cut a big one, see if I can manage to uh, transfer it from here onto there without breaking it. Yeah. Okay, so there's my monster one, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and a spare biscuit. So. That needs to go in the oven for between 12 and 15 minutes. Okay, that's 12 minutes, let's have a look. They still feel a bit soft, so I'm going to give them another three minutes. <whistles> Hate the beep on that, you can hear it a mile away. <laughs> Maybe that's the idea. Okay, I reckon they'll do. They've been cooling on there for a couple of minutes, so just pop them onto a wire rack to cool, oops, completely. Possibly two wire racks. <laughs> right, now I'm going to coat the biscuits on one side only with chocolate. So I've got 400 grams of cheap dark chocolate, um, uh, which is about 50% cocoa solids. And uh, you don't want anything more cocoa y than, than that because it would be too bitter. And this is meant for kids. Ha ha ha. So break them all up into bits, but save. Well, what have I got? Eight bits there. And I'm using the microwave method to melt the chocolate because it's easy and it works. So whack that in the microwave for 20 seconds. Give it another 20 seconds. And keep giving it 20 second bursts in the microwave and stir between each one until eventually it's all melted. There's the chocolate, all melty melty. And what we're going to do now is uh, a form of tempering which um, we do by adding those little blocks that we reserved and melting those with uh, the residual heat of the chocolate and tempering it just means that your chocolate will turn out shiny not dull and uninteresting in theory we need those blobs to melt completely and then we can pour it over the biscuits which I've got back on the wire rack on silicon mat to catch any drips. Don't worry about it not running down the sides because uh, we'll deal with that later. So pop those in the fridge for the chocolate to set. Right we're ready to make the marshmallows so I've got 170 grams of granulated sugar, I've got 120 ml of syrup, four leaves of gelatine, 60 ml of water, teaspoon of vanilla extract, quarter of a teaspoon of salt and also when we're assembling it you want some raspberry jam. The gelatine, this packet says four leaves sets approximately one pint of liquid. If you're using powdered gelatine you need about 10 grams of that. Now with leaf gelatine you need to bloom it which is uh, a partial hydration that uh, stops it from being a brittle sheet and makes it a soggy sheet. So you just soak it in water for a few minutes basically. 
with uh, powdered gelatine, you don't need to do that. The syrup, I'm using agave syrup. You can use corn syrup, maple syrup, golden syrup, any kind of syrup you like or can easily get. I'm going to add the sugar and the salt, quarter teaspoon, and the, and the water and the syrup to a pan. This is a 250ml bottle, so I need about half of it. That's probably a little bit more than half, never mind. Right, and we need to heat that up. Uh, give it a good stir first. You don't want to be stirring it once you've started heating it, because you might shock it and crystallise it, which is not good. So we'll heat that up for about three or four minutes with the lid on. Right, now here's my gelatine, softened. So what I'm going to do now is dissolve it in 60ml uh, of warm water. Now the syrup mixture is boiling away, <laughs> well, bubbling away. And what we need to do now is continue heating it till it gets to 115 degrees Celsius. 112, <laughs> 114.9, 115. Right, so turn it off, take it off the heat. Right, my gelatine didn't dissolve in the hot water, so I've just microwaved it for uh, uh, about 40 seconds and that's dissolved nicely. So we pop that in the mixing bowl and now we want it on low speed. And we'll just kind of trickle the syrup mix down onto the side of the bowl. We'll just leave that stirring away for about 12, 15 minutes until it's gone really thick. Okay, um, I had the wrong attachment on the, on the KitchenAid, so um, it should be using a whisk. So. <laughs> okay, it's thickened up quite a lot. I'm on pretty much maximum speed here. I don't think it'll go any thicker, but um, I do think that'll be wonderful. <laughs> so let's uh, assemble our wagon wheels. Oh, by the way, I didn't add the vanilla because I noticed that the syrup that I got uh, already includes it. If you are going to add vanilla, do it towards the end of the beating process. So I'm just going to spread raspberry jam on the bottom pieces. As I said, this is optional. The, uh, the ones that I bought were the original version that don't have jam, but, you know, they do, they do do a jam version now as well. And now, this might be a hard bit, is to uh, spread marshmallow on the top pieces. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. It smells really good, actually. Pop it on the top. Give it a squeeze so the marshmallow comes to the edges. Oh yeah, baby! <laughs> I'll just pop these in the fridge for about half an hour so the marshmallow sets and then we can chocolatise the edges. Right, there's uh, quite a bit of marshmallow left so I'm gonna turn them into like sweeties. So I'll put that into this tin to set but it is extremely sticky stuff. So to stop it sticking too much I've got a half tablespoon of Corn flour, corn starch, and a half tablespoon of icing sugar, confectioner sugar. Why do I say everything twice? Give the tin a good spray with oil. Remember to get some more next time you go to the shop. And swizzle some of that around. And then spoon the marshmallow into the tin. It's amazing stuff. Don't put it in the fridge, just leave it out um, for ooh, hours and hours. <laughs> right, time to do the edges. So I've got my chocolate remelted and I'll just do this. And yeah, we are gonna get covered in chocolate. Ta-da!
Right, it's taste test time with what's the name? Thingy. Thingy. Thingy! <laughs> Mrs. Is. Keith Cooks! <laughs> da, da, da. Wow, Hello, Petal. Hello, I made the moon. Oh my lord. I made the wheel of a carpet wagon wheel. <laughs> when he said he was making um, wagon wheels, <laughs> I thought, oh no, because I find most sweets. Another carpentry these... project. <laughs> no, but I, I find most sauce. sweets these days like way too sweet. But we tried them, didn't we? We tried the real thing. Yeah. The original ones in the red packets. Mm. They were all right. Mmm. Oh, I'm never going to eat all that. <laughs> Watch me. Well, this is really good. Mmm. I'm sorry if I sound surprised. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. It's got a kind of a nutty texture to it. Pinwheel oats you used. Pinhead oats. Pinhead oats, yeah. So, yeah, and um, yeah, you get the jam, and you, you made your own marshmallow, didn't you? Eventually. You clever bunny. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit touch and go, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, this is really out. nice. Yeah, I like this. It's not too mm. sweet, it's just mm. yummy. Mm. Mm. You need a cup of tea with it. Mm -hmm. Or summer. Right, anyway. Mm -hmm. Wagon wheels. Mm -hmm. Make them. They're mm -hmm. not that hard. And you don't have to make your own biscuits and marshmallow, obviously. Do you know what? Oh. That's a really nice biscuit and it's not too sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because this, can you imagine? <laughs> the size of it. That would be serious overkill. That's the size they used to be. <laughs> when you were cool. In my dreams. Oh! <laughs> mm. Shall we wave at people? I suppose, yes. <laughs> I think we should. Okay, mm -hmm. that's it then. Thanks for watching and see you next time. So, Brenda, I'm sure we can depend on you for a realistic assessment of how big wagon wheels <laughs> really used to be when we Brenda were Brenda from Croggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should know. Mm. All right, chop. <laughs>